Hello everyone, for this video I'm going to draw a shear and bending moment diagram for this simple supported beam. For this beam it's seeing now a concentrated load of 4,000 pounds. Uh, the length uh, from our pencil part A to the concentrated load is 7 feet and then the balance of it is 3 feet. So the total length of the beam is 10 feet. And Again, I'm going to show you the steps on how to draw the shear moment bending diagram. So first thing, again, you want to do is sum the forces in the x and y direction. Uh, in the x direction, we have AX for the pin support. For the roller, we have no uh, force in the x direction. There's none. So the only thing we have is X, and there's no force in the x direction so our reaction for a in the x direction is zero uh, pounds for in, in the y direction we have our pencil port a y plus a roller here b y minus four thousand pounds and in the end we want this to equal to excuse me not ten we want the end result, the summation of forces, to equal to zero. Because we don't want this to move up and down. We don't want this to move left or right. And we don't also we don't want this to rotate either. So later I'll talk about the moment. But here we have one equation, two unknowns. So we need to use another equation that's going to help us solve at least one of the unknowns. So then we could get either the reaction BY or the reaction AY. In, or, in order to do that, we're going to sum the moments about A. And because we don't want this to rotate, the summation of moments about A has to equal to zero. If it doesn't equal to zero, then it's rotating, and we don't want it to rotate. So our concentrated load is seven feet away from the pin support A. So we have seven feet times 4,000 pounds. Now, is this positive or negative? Uh, it's gonna be. It's gonna try to rotate clockwise, and for me, that's gonna be negative. I'm gonna have that a negative. Now, what's preventing it from rotating is this roller, the roller support. So there's a reaction going up. So what is that? So we the distance from roller B to A, pin support A, is 10 feet. I'm gonna say plus because it wants to rotate it counterclockwise. So that's positive for me. So we have 10 feet times the reaction by which we do not know but we're going to figure out and in the end the summation of moments has to equal to zero so seven times four is 28 we have three zeros here it's gonna be negative that's pounds feet 10 feet times by is just 10 feet times by in the end, that all equals to zero. So we're gonna try to solve for zero. So we're gonna bring the 28,000 pounds feet to the right side of the equation. So we're gonna have 10 by equals to 28,000, and then we're just gonna divide it by 10 both sides. So we get by equals to 2,800 pounds. Now that we have by, we have by here. We go solve for ay. So a Y is four thousand pounds minus twenty eight hundred pounds. This equals to a thousand two hundred pounds. So the reaction at A is a thousand two hundred pounds. The reaction at B in the Y direction is 2,800 pounds uh, and if you add them up 1,200 plus 2,800 that's going to give me 4,800 pounds which equals to the downward uh, equals to the concentrated load that is acting on the beam here so perfect that's what we want now that we have our reactions we could draw our shear diagram so again we have this this is uh, 4,000 pounds. 
the reaction here that we got for A was 1200. And because there's no uniform law, there's nothing here, nothing is happening to the shear. So the shear here remains the same until it reaches to the concentrated load. The concentrated load is going to bring this 1200 shear all the way down to negative 2800 pounds. Then it's going to go again. It's going to stay constant because there's nothing going on here until it reaches by so remember this is 1200 this is 2800 pounds goes back to zero so this is my shear oh, I can't spell today shear diagram the uh, ground and now that we have a shear diagram, we could get our moment diagram. So, because this is constant, if we take a moment of a linear line, it's just going to be a straight line. So it's going to be something like this. Uh, might not be up to scale, but that's fine. The maximum one is going to be here. It's going to drop back down. It's going to look like this. Now. To calculate this maximum moment is very very simple. You could either take the area over here. Remember this is seven feet, this is three feet. Or you could get the area under this curve. So you could pick any any area, you could pick this area, or you could pick this area right here. Whichever whichever area you pick is going to give you the maximum moment. Doesn't matter which one you pick. So let's say we pick this area right here of the rectangle. Twelve 100 pounds times the, the length of the beam or, or this section is which is 7 it's going to give us our maximum moment so 12 times 7 is 84 add that two zeros so we have uh, 84 pounds feet for the maximum moment so you can also do it over here too this is uh, 28 100 times three feet and it's going to give you the same result 84 thousand pounds excuse me not 84,000 8400 pounds feet so that's how you do it that's how you do it sum the forces in x y directions sum the moment either about a or b i picked a that's going to help you get the reactions at A and B. Once you have the reactions at A and B, uh, you can draw your shear diagram. This is 1,200 pounds. Nothing's happening here. No loading, nothing. So stay, it remains the same until, this, until it reaches the concentrated load. It's going to go from 1,200 minus 4,000, which is negative 2,800. And again, it remains the same until it reaches uh, to point B and it sees that reaction. It goes back to zero. This is my shear diagram. It's going to look something like this. And if you get the area of this rectangle, or this rectangle is going to give you the maximum moment of, uh, that this beam is seeing. That's it. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Hope you guys learned. And thank you.